Welcome everyone in this video we will talk about adiabatic processes and we will derive the formula that describes those adiabatic processes. So the word is adiabatic. Now what this means is and I'm sorry I don't know the root of it exactly so if anyone knows the root of this word please go ahead and write it in the comment section but this simply mean, means, for our purposes, that, that the total heat that we are giving to a system or taking from a system balances out. That is, dq is zero. The net heat is zero, okay? So, we know that, and in the last video, we even used this. In the last thermodynamics video, it was the first video of thermodynamics, and this is the second one. We use the fact that dq is equal to ncv dt plus pdv, right? Thing is, this is either second or third law of thermodynamics. I think it is the second one. But we know that this is going to be zero because that is by definition an adiabatic process, all right? And so, if that is the case, I will use the ideal gas formula. We know that PV equals NRT. And so, if I, if I solve for P, I get that NRT over V gives you P. So, I will substitute that here. Let me do that. We have, sorry, we have NCV dt plus, instead of P, I'm writing NRT over V dv equaling zero a nice thing happens here what is that look at it and cancel and represents the mole number so this means that how many particles of gas ideal gas we have is irrelevant for the derivation that we are making it does not change the result okay and so if at this point if we were to um, if we were to do an interesting thing, and that is to divide both sides by T, temperature, we obtain the result CV dt by T plus, uh, let's see, R, let me write it like this, R dV by V equals zero. Now, we can take the integral on both sides, and you can, you know that you can distribute the integral sign, so you can do this right and since cv and r they are constants you can basically even do this okay and we will take the integral of zero on the right now this might be tricky please 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 do not think that the integral of zero is zero okay don't think that don't just do things from memory let's go back to the meaning behind integrals integral Anti-derivative is, as it, the name suggests, it is the anti-operation. It is the opposite of, it is the inverse of derivatives, basically, okay? It undoes what a derivative does. So the question is, which function has derivative zero? Well, that should be a constant function, right? So this integral will give a constant. And that constant may or may not be zero, but... We can't say that it is zero, okay? We can just say that it is a constant. It's a number. So, well, then we just, just take the integral then. It's a constant. That's how I write it. And on the left, we have CV. I mean, this integral, it gives, it's saying basically which function has a derivative 1 over t. That would be ln of t, nature logarithm of t. We put absolute values normally to say that the inside of the ln function cannot be negative, but in this case, we don't even need to put this because the temperature and the volume, they will be positive. And you can say, hey, it doesn't have to be positive, especially for the temperature. But yes, it has to be positive because we're not using Fahrenheit or Celsius. We are using Kelvin. And zero Kelvin is the absolute zero. You cannot get any colder than that as far as we know, okay? So we don't need to put an absolute value. The temperature is always positive. It's not even zero. It is always positive, okay, practically. And the volume, obviously, as well. So we have this. 
Now, it is a property of logarithms that you can take this multiplier and put it as the exponent inside. So we have, we have ln of t to the power of cv plus ln of v to the power of r, giving you a constant. And if you have the same base, you can add, and if you hold, hold on, if you have two bases, if you have, I'm sorry, if you have two logarithms that have the same base and you're adding them, you can basically combine them as one logarithm and multiply the arguments. That is, you can do this. ln t c v times v r gives you a constant. It is still the same constant, remember. And at this point, you remember, this is to the power of e. This is base e, right? This is so by definition telling us tcv times vr equals e to the power of a constant, okay? And so we can call this another constant. It's another constant. And I write it with a capital C because, well, they are different constants, right? That's, that's the only reason. Only reason. And so at this point, if we were to, I mean, this is just, we could stop here, but we don't normally use this formula. If you were to just take the, well, which one is it? Well, it's going to be, if you take both sides to the power of one over CV and don't say, why are we doing this? As I said, this is just a convention. You don't have to do it. But if we do it, we will have T times V to the power of R CV, right? That will equal, well, constant to the power of some number. That's just a constant. And I will write it the way we wrote it initially. But please don't confuse it. This is not the same constant as this one, okay? They are not the same. They are different. And so this is, I mean, we're getting closer to the end. But there is, there is a couple of things that we could still do, actually. And that is to... That is to, instead of t, we, we substitute, using this expression, we substitute pv over nr. We have v to the power of rcv equaling a constant. Notice that these are constant, so we can just toss them to the other side and include them in the constant. This changes the value of the constant as well, of course. We had pv, right? So I'm just going to add... 1 here as the exponent of v. And we have a definition for this. This thing r cv plus 1. This is defined as gamma. And this is the ad adiabatic constant. This is the adiabatic constant basically. Okay. Adiabatic constant. And you can see that this in fact equals cp by cv. Because in the last video, we showed that CP is CV plus R. So if you divide CP plus R by CV, you get 1 plus R over CV. And so the formula that we tried to derive all along, it is very famous. You will probably never forget it if you do enough thermodynamics problems. It is that P... I don't like this color. Come on now. Okay. okay. Let me let me change it. I'm sorry. Let's do it with green. It is the color of nature, right? So <laughs> the result is P times V to the power of gamma is a constant for adiabatic processes. Anyways, I hope this video was helpful. If you have any questions, please add them in the comment section. I hope to see you in another video. So for that, please make sure that you subscribe. And that's it. Until then, take care.